more on this dire humanitarian situation in the enclave. Uh, we're joined by Bushra Khalidi, Oxfam's uh, policy lead for the occupied territories in Israel. She joins us live from Ramallah. Thank you very much for your time, Bushra. Uh, by all accounts, these Palestinians killed whilst waiting for aid were innocent, unarmed civilians waiting for desperately needed food. What does this look like to you? I mean, the aerial footage is pretty clear and stark. Uh, you have, you know, hordes of desperate people jumping at trucks um, because of the levels of hunger and starvation we're uh, hearing about in the north, where uh, people are feeding on animal fodder, fodder to the point that apparently animal fodder, fodder is now dwindling. Um, supplies of animal fodder are dwindling because people have you know, leaves and, and, and things like that to eat in the north. Um, and, and this, of course, attack exacerbates an already, you know, dire humanitarian situation, uh, you know, with, with there's, there are no more words. Um, and this is not an isolated I incident. This is not the first time. Uh, it's, it's almost indicative of a concerning pattern, um, you know, and, and similar justifications have been used in the past. Uh, where there's shooting at unarmed civilians uh, that are, you know, the levels of where the levels of desperation are clear on on the on the aerial footage itself. Um, reports were, were, you know, were made that there were there were victims targeted directly in the chest and in the head uh, from the syndicate of journalists in Palestine. Um, so again, this incident can't be seen as a as as an isolated event. It has to be seen as part of a you know strategy. Um, and it's not, uh, you know, it's about a continuous and deliberate policy of starving an entire population, of collectively punishing an entire civilian population. And this is a violation of international law. And we're hearing that 25,000 of those 30,000 killed to date are understood to be women and children. Those are such shocking figures, Bushra. Yeah, in fact, um, half of Gaza's population are children. Uh, it's a very young population. And, you know, uh, four months of bombardments, uh, uh, you know, has eroded the hope uh, and sense of safety of children and women and men uh, in Gaza. Men have a lot to carry, you know, having to care for their women. My friend, three weeks ago, um, she gave birth without anesthetic in Gaza. Uh, and had a C-section without anesthetic. And me as a mother, I, I cannot comprehend that. Um, not as a humanitarian worker, as, as a, a, simply as a mother. Um, uh, so it, the dignity has been eroded of Palestinians in Gaza. Um, uh, seeing them, you know, hoard trucks of aid and then being attacked for it, you know, uh, so either you're killed going to get flour for your family to feed them because they're hungry, uh, or you're, you know, uh, uh, being killed because of bombs. I mean, this is the day-to-day -day life now in Gaza. It's survival. It's simply desperate, Bushra. Now, one humanitarian relief chief has said life is draining out of Gaza at terrifying speed. A very accurate description, it would seem right now, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, actually, my family uh, are in Gaza, and um, my mother-in-law has stopped talking and stopped eating for the last uh, 10 days. Uh, so, you know, when we say about life, it's also not just physical life, um, but also the mental health of people. People are tired. Uh, this has been relentless at every single level. We have seen every single sector uh, collapse and be brought to its knees in Gaza. Um, uh, there's no more health sector. There's no more local markets. There are no bakeries. There are no schools. Uh, there's, you know, so yes, indeed, life has been drained out of Gaza. Bushra, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that your family there and I hope they manage to keep safe. Thank you very much for your time this evening, Bushra Khalidi, talking to us uh, there live from Ramallah. Thank you for having me.